what's up survivors and uh, that was one hell of a trailer all right so i don't know about you guys though but i'm excited for the return of myth of empires i know there's a lot of a lot of people i shouldn't say a lot of people there there's a chunk of veterans in the community that are kind of downscaling it and making it sound like it's the stupidest thing on the planet but let's be honest they make up a minority and who cares about minorities I'm kidding. I, I say that politely. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so unfortunately, the majority has spoken and the minority of players that are diehards that have been around for the last two years are upset about a lot of the changes. But uh, we're going to cover a bunch of those changes. And now, uh, keep in mind, too, that even they don't know everything that's happening. Even with the test live, we didn't get to experience the entire 1.0 in its entirety. But yeah let's jump into it okay so as officially that is the full extended release 1.0 trailer which was amazing by the way um so with that uh we're going to be doing a full recap of everything that was announced since christmas all right so this is going to be a little bit of a longer episode but i'm going to try to recap everything that was announced since christmas with as much information as i can relay as possible with my knowledge of everything that I've learned, I've asked, and things like that. So first and foremost, we're getting a new map. If you weren't aware, there's a new map that's coming to the game. Uh, Danso, 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 however you want to pronounce it. Um, island, it says map there, but it's actually an island. Um, I, get to, I did get to play um, the first few days of test play and the last day of test play. Um, I streamed the first three hours of my first day, but after that, I just stopped doing it. Um, it is a really cool map. I'm excited for a lot of the things that they had on it, and I'm hoping most of the stuff that, that's on the map actually becomes legitimate in the game because they had some really cool stuff. Um, so it's it's a it's a really nice map. I'm excited for it. Uh, it's going to come with a lot of new features with the 1.0, including both land, air, and sea combat and defenses so we're getting things from uh warships to rafts to hot air balloons to kites to uh anti-air ballistas to anti-infantry ballistas to new siege weapons new new uh, animals new mounds new beasts all kinds of stuff and we're going to cover almost all of that in here so they talk about adding in all that kind of stuff in the new large scale battles for county battles prefect battles fortress battles all kinds of stuff so some stuff we already know, as well as some new stuff. Uh, Build your empire from the ground up. Basically talks about how you can pretty much add all kinds of different features from the game. Um, things from walls, foundations, windows, lightings, all different types of skins. So you can have a completely different type of building style. Um, and there's a little bit of a thing that you guys probably saw at the end of that trailer. Uh, so uh, <laughs> we're getting Egypt, Persia, and Greece. So I'm excited to see what they do with those three. But uh, I'm excited to see for the future of Myth of Empires. It's starting to look pretty interesting. Um, over 3,000 crafting recipes uh, with plenty of add-ons being added throughout the game as other things like that. So, you know, they've got all different types of stuff and they kind of showcase a little bit here. You can see all the different types of crafting things that you have access to. Most of this stuff in this picture um, is uh, stuff that's already in the game. But if you kind of look down here, they have the new uh, Beast Lord Taming Pen that allows you to increase their stats and life force. Then we have these things right here, which I believe are farming machines. No, those are crossbows. So these are basically a uh, new type of siege equipment um, <clears throat> and stuff like that. And there's another one back there. And I think there's another one right there, too. So there's like three of them. And then uh, different types of lighting. You can see the training dummy. So you got all your NPCs training over here. All kinds of cool stuff. That they're going to be adding and then we'll look at this picture again real quick so you can see the new raft that's in the game that's right here that's the new raft right there um the waterway system i don't know about these little small boats if those are just aesthetic or not but they've got things like that this all of this building right here this is all part of the game so you can do all of this so i'm excited for that stuff as well too um then they have the new uh the new uh tameable beasts so we're going to be getting things like bears, wolves, and something else. I noticed that there were three. Could have been a lion or a tiger. I didn't know. I know they mentioned something about like lions or tigers or something like that would be tameable as well um, for new beast riders and things like that. So we're supposed to be getting the new beast lords, um, enhancing their abilities. Um, we're supposed to be able to train them, fight alongside them, ride them, all kinds of stuff. 
um, as well as new PVE content from musical instruments to decoration to servants. So we're going to be adding servants to the game as well, too, which is pretty cool. Um, they won't be able to craft or fight, but they'll be able to stand around your base and do like random things. Hopefully they can actually do this. This would be cool. Um, I'm, I'm hoping those are actually servants that are playing those instruments because uh, that would be awesome. You can do dances and all kinds of stuff. Uh, and then this was the big one that a lot of people are mostly excited for is the new private server mode. Um, you'll also, they're also introducing an official offline mode. So similar to have Conan and Ark have an offline mode. Uh, Myth of Empires will officially have its own offline mode for those that just want to play solo. So yeah, I'm excited for that. Now I am going to be playing on official servers as well. Um, but I might actually do a series in solo mode too, just for shits and giggles. But uh, we're definitely going to be turning up the it's turning up the farming a little bit when we do that because uh, this game is a very grindy, very great. It is not meant for solo play. Um, you have to whoop, you have to um, drastically increase um, uh, your settings if you want to be able to farm like if you were playing on official because grinding, especially grinding those guild points, can take forever. But anyways, um, they also talked about adding a uh, mod system into the game so people can mod their servers for those that want to make clusters so over here it kind of shows you what you can do with each type so only those who own server clusters will be allowed to do things like uh county and fortress battles as well as cross have cross market as well as cross server play but those who have like single server machines where you just have one map and then you know people all play on it you'll only be allowed to like join other people and do like random basic stuff you won't be able to do like the big battles unless you own um a server cluster so there is that um and there is a reason for that too because it's kind of the way the servers are set up um but yeah uh so future plans of course as i showed at the end of the trailer um persia greek and egypt civilizations will be coming to myth of empire in the future so i'm excited for that new structures weapons tools and equipments so whoo excited guys excited to see that and uh this is the persian so this is the persian immortal outfit so that is pretty cool excited to see that coming and then of course they announced the taming grounds for your beast lords where you'll be able to train them and increase their life force and their stats uh the royal carriage which will be uh carried by multiple npcs not horses at least according to the thing it said it was multiple uh nope this one is the large one is horse drawn so this one will be horse drawn or warrior drawn <laughs> um they talked about enhanced breeding um and new mount skills new animal skills and attributes are being added to the game new guild uh mount farms um this is a new farming system that lets you basically set up your crops and plants wherever you want uh new siege engines which we saw a couple of those in the trailer already so i'm excited for all the new siege engines they have like the giant uh uh war chariot um the new balloons the kites all that kind of stuff the the cutter the horse cutter all that kind of stuff new stable attributes for players um to help with armor stability and repairing um i know a lot of people have complained about over the years how armor uh durability is very limited and it just it breaks down way too quick quickly um now um your skills and certain attributes will affect that which will allow armor to either break less and it'll be individual as well as um based off the crafter so things like that uh the new food box that's being added to the game that allows you to sell masses a mass amount of food on the market board because that's always been something that a lot of people have asked for because lots of clans especially big pvp ones don't want to have to spend a lot of time grinding food for when they've got like 100 members and they need to feed them that's a lot of food um, this will allow them to use that money they earn through pvp to buy food off the market board um, unless you're somebody like me who usually ends up being a, uh, a farming clan for a big PVP group, because <laughs> that's what I like to do. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that was the, they talked about that. That was quite recently. Um, this one's a big one right here. Oh, let me do that again. Keep double clicking off to the side there. Um, so for you guys out there that are curious about how you can transfer your international edition over to a steam edition because the international version of the game is being completely taken down the website everything so you have to go do that before the 21st of february okay this is very important you have to go do this um 
it will close after the 21st of February. So you have to do this before then. So up here, it says that they will be closing the Myth of Empires International Edition. Full release of the game will go on Steam. So all the save data, everything, gold tokens, Steam account, everything, your cosmetics will all be transferred. But you have to apply to get it transferred. To do that, you have to go to this website right here, transfermymythofempire.com. I will leave that in the description down below. I will also... Um, Possibly leave a description of this stuff right here as well, too. But you need to do this before the launch of the game. Okay? All right. So there was that. So for anybody who has the international version, make sure you transfer your account over to Steam. And I will leave a description with a link to the website in my thingy down below. All right. Moving on. Then they back in about end of January, they talked about the new sailing system and the new siege weapons and warships and things like that. So we have the new warship that's actually pretty big. Um, I believe you can add a couple of types of ballistas and stuff to it, but I don't know how much we're going to be able to do with it. I didn't personally get a chance to play with it in the test live. Um, but uh, yeah, I heard some couple of people were uh, trying to mess with it, but I don't remember anybody actually getting to play with it much. Um, so you'll be able to add different types of rooms to rooms to it. There'll be uh, docking mods for different types of things that you can put on it. It's primarily a warship. Um, for the new island map because it has a big enough waterway for that for this thing to work where the old map really doesn't you know, the rafts and the warships really won't be as effective on that map um, then we have the new large war wagon that they showed in the trailer as well that was attacking the front gate it's got flamethrowers it's got size battling rams a place to put units i'm pretty sure even npc units for shooting arrows and stuff like that so that's pretty cool it's a massive tank chariot for carrying NPCs, tools, and various harvesters, and mining equipment, apparently, too. So, apparently, you can even use this thing to do farming. That is interesting. <laughs> apparently, you can even go out and farm with this. <laughs> so, a big war chariot on PvP, basically, where somebody can just go around the map and just farm a bunch of resources and somewhat relatively safety. Um, then they talked about the personal carrier that will use NPCs. Um, if you want to be carried around by your thralls, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Um, this is primarily a PvE aspect of the game. It uh, has no PvP purpose whatsoever. Um, they're starting to put a little bit more emphasis on the PvE side of the game since uh, the game was heavy PvP oriented and you really only did PvE for, you know, for the eventual PvP. Um, storage chest traps, uh, new martial arts skills, new mount skills, New various challenges and instances are being added uh, for server-wide challenges and things like that. We'll be able to earn points for killing certain types of NPCs. Um, the new racing system will be added where you'll be able to race with your horses to use the fastest on certain types of tracks and stamina and control and all that kind of stuff. The item reclaiming system through the guild warehouse. You'll have seven days to be able to reclaim deleted items and things like that, which is pretty cool. Um... And there was the play test that I, again, I participated in for the most part, but I missed out on a lot of it. Um, back in uh, mid-January, they announced the new material chest that is basically the ARC version of a dedicated storage or the Myth of Empires versions of ARC's dedicated storage. It can hold a single item, but a massive amount of that item. And it kind of looks like a very techy thing when it has the whole Chinese uh, um, um, crap. I'm having a brain derp. Combination lock, thank you. <laughs> so it's got the whole like combination lock thing on the top and a bunch of gears to kind of show that it's like very secure, basically. Um, <clears throat> so they talked about that. Um, then they have the scythe wagon, which I was correct for all those guys that kept saying I was wrong. It could be a harvester. No, it wasn't a harvester. We have plenty of harvesters in the game. This was definitely not going to be, they, they weren't going to do a horse version of something we already had. Um, so they're adding this into the game, which is the scythe wagon for uh, horse riders to be able to ride down. You'll basically be basically you don't want to get too close to one of these. <laughs> you just want to be very careful because it will shred your horse and other players to pieces very quickly. Uh, they talked about the climbing claws for climbing uh, walls and mountains more effectively, lower stamina, faster climbing, stuff like that. Um, of course, then they talked about the whole private server thing down here. Then the rework to horse breeding, they mentioned again. 
uh, the new handheld illumination abilities for different types of lanterns. You can walk around with like a lantern and things like that now. Uh, random stat bonus equipment. So now when you make gear, you'll get a random stat bonus based off your skills and things like that, which will help with your attributes. So not every piece of gear will be made equally. So sometimes you might have to make a piece of gear multiple times to get the stat you're looking for. Um, and that's if you get lucky enough and actually get in the quality you're looking for. <laughs> so you'll also be able to sign your equipment now. So if you make something that's like really freaking good, that's a very rare quality with extremely good stat bonuses, you'll be able to choose to sign it. Basically bragging rights is what it is. Um, ice walls. So now you'll be able to cover your walls with water to make it harder for people to climb them. So that's cool. Um, new character appearances and things like that. So they're doing that as well. And then they talked about the playtest again. Uh, the armor that's for anybody who purchased the game before 1.0, whether it was international or Steam version, you'll be getting this armor as an exclusive. I thank you from the development team for sticking around and buying the game, um, especially for those that actually played it. Uh, then they announced back in early January uh, the chain ballista and the toxic ballista. And you got to see the chain ballista in action actually in the trailer when it was shooting at the incoming fine balloons and it was trying to shoot down arrows and the catapult things and stuff like that. So this will basically sh it will shoot down uh, incoming projectiles. And then they have the toxic ballista, which is basically a small ballista. That's an automated one that you can mount to different various objects as well as the large balloon and it will shoot at incoming targets and things like that. It's kind of like adding auto turrets to the side of a raft. Basically, that's what this is for you arc players. Um, then they talked about the automated flamethrower. You got to see this in action in the trailer as well when the guy ran through the corridor and got lit up by flame flamethrowers. So, yeah, uh, then they talked about the steam inventory item for those that are transferring uh you basically your cosmetics and stuff will come with you if you decide to play solo mode private mode or things like that you won't lose those items if you decide to play on a different era server or solo mode you'll still have access to those uh they're adding things they're adding crate drops now um where you'll be able to based off of i think it's the amount of time you play in game you'll earn free skin crates that you'll be able to utilize and sell on the steam market or for yourself so it's just another way to incentivize if you play enough you eventually can get a bunch of these skins if you decide you don't want to buy them but you have to play a ton to get these skin boxes basically and that's what i'm assuming that is um <clears throat> so it just incentivizes people to play a lot to get the stuff for free so yeah which is in my opinion is a good thing I mean, if, if you want something for free, you should put the work and time into it, especially if you're not going to pay for it. But anyways, uh, converting warriors into servants. Uh, converted warriors won't be able to fight, but they will be able to interact with certain things around the base, basically. I'm hoping they'll be able to like carry your chariots and do things like uh, play instruments and kind of like you can set them up to like kind of look like they're talking or stuff like that. So they kind of it's supposed to add some liveliness for PVE bases specifically. Um, or solo bases, basically. Um, uh, the new warrior uh, resource collection system that's being added to the game. Um, this is a system that basically allows you to send warriors out based off of reputation points you earn from various factions. And they will bring back certain resources from said faction. Um, or from certain resources from that faction's area. So let's say you get enough uh, resource or you know points or whatever, resource points, um, and the bandits. And maybe you're struggling to get that one bandit drop that you need in order to um, upgrade your warrior to the next tier. Like you need that. You need those three items to do that. I think this is one way that you can do that because I know some people will like they just hate going out and constantly running the camp over and over and over and over and over again. And I think this is a way that if you've already done the camp a hundred times, but you have a new warrior that you want to advance or, you know, level up or, you know, increase their stats and abilities even further 
that you can send them out on missions, collection missions, and they'll bring back uh, various items and resources. And this might be one way to do that. That's how I understand it at the moment. Again, some of the stuff we really didn't get to experience a lot in the test play. Personally, I didn't. And from what I heard from a bunch of other people, they didn't as well. So I'm hoping that's how it works, but we'll see. Um, new inherited animals uh, skills. So uh, animals will now be able to have certain types of skills and you can breed them to get other types of skills which will allow them to help run certain equipments because a lot of these things like the flamethrower and the raft and the ballistas and stuff like that, they require certain creatures to make them power because you have to put them in the cage and then they run and they make it, they make it work. So you'll be able to get a bunch of rabbits and a bunch of these little cages on the side of your flamethrower and be like, you know, I'm, I'm getting power world vibes right now. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm playing a lot of that lately. But anyways, so there is that. And then, of course, they have the improved boss AI that is coming to the game as well. Um, hopefully they do improved other types of stuff as well, too, on top of it. Um, then during the New Year's announcement uh, of the game, uh, end of December, early January, they announced the giant Sky Lantern, which is actually bigger than I thought it was. I thought maybe you could fit like one of those ballistas on here, but no, you can fit four of them on here. This thing is actually pretty massive. Um, then the kite launcher, you saw that in the trailer as well, when those guys all fired off the cliffside and then kited down into the base. Um, and then the, the ballistas were shooting them down out of the sky, at least a couple of them anyways. So there was that. And then this is another thing that I want to make very, 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 very clear real quickly. Um, all the current servers that exist right now, as well as any servers that they add for the new maps, um, they will be considered classic era. So the classic era servers um, will not be able to interact in any way, fashion or form with existing characters with the new era servers. OK, so when the game launches, you'll have the old servers, a.k.a. classic era or legacy or you'll have your new era servers, which will be completely freshly wiped. There will be no market, no economy, nothing. There will be no overpowered characters for at least a couple of days <laughs> for those PVP people out there. Um, in saying that, uh, they, they did say that certain things will also be locked down too. Now, from what I heard, from the test live from people that I talked to is you couldn't transfer stuff off of PVP to PVE. Now, if that's the case for the official launch, that is a good move. That was personally one of my requests that I had pushed for very, very hard. And because it, I, it is extremely unacceptable that you can go to a PVP server and run off to a PVE server with all your loot. That is just unacceptable. That shouldn't be allowed. It's one thing to transfer stuff from PVE to PVP, but there's no reason you should be able to, to transfer stuff from PVP back to PVE. Once you take it to PVP, it's stuck there on PVP. You, sh you can transfer to another PVP server, but you shouldn't be allowed to take all your stuff back to PVE. Hopefully that's the case. Sorry, I just had to sneeze there for a minute. Whew. But anyways, so with the introduction to the classic and new era servers, um, we're going to have additional counties and prefix places. So there'll be 16 in total. Um, proficiency uh, players uh, will be able to gain more proficiency. Um, guild adjustments. So to limits, align limits and numbers and stuff like that to kind of control the Zergs. It ain't going to work. Not in the while. It ain't going to work to a, to a sense anyways. It ain't going to work. Um, We'll see what happens, but I, I have my doubts. Um, new ways to collect resources um, through different types of mining huts and things like that. I did not get to experience this in the test play, so I'm curious as to what this is all about still. Um, new PVE areas within PVP servers. Um, basically, the farming locations, like the guild farming locations, will now be PVP zones, even on PVE servers. So you won't be able, if you take them over, you have to defend them. It's not something you can just sit there, log off the server. So basically all those big PVP Zergs that have farms and resource collection points on PVE servers will now not just be able to sit there and just let them 
collect resources. They're going to have to defend them. Otherwise, they're going to have to do it on PvP. And if you, if my personal opinion, you're better off just building your farm on PvP because the new system allows you to build anywhere. There's no reason for this unless you want to do this casually for fun. All right. And then uh, during the uh, announcements for the Christmas thing, they talked about the new raft. So they showed off the new raft, which you could put. I think they said boars and wolves into this cage, which will allow it to move. Uh, and then they did the official announcement of the uh, the new launch of 1.0, where they did the teaser trailer and they showed off the new kite system, as well as the cutters that have been basically teased for the last three years, um, as well as they announced the new map as well as the new farming system, kind of. They kind of teased at it with this picture right here because there is no open world farm this perfect anywhere in the game. So this obviously had to be a new farming system. And that was my prediction from the beginning and it was turned out to be true. So, and that was pretty much it. Um, you know, they did some talking about, you know, the new cutters or the cutters that were talked about. So you'll have like, One's for fiber, one's for stone, one's for grass, and all those different types of things. Um, and yeah, so lots and lots and lots of information. Um, I'm excited. If you guys have any questions at all, if I missed something, or maybe I just misinterpreted something, uh, don't forget to hesitate to bring it up down below. But if you have any questions at all about this, guys, um, feel free to ask me um, one of the best ways to get information right now is to just join the myth of empires discord um, trust me there are lots of experienced players still in the discord uh, that would love to be able to help answer your questions as well as plenty of active admins and uh, stuff like that and developers that occasionally pop in and answer questions too so if you ever have any questions or you need any help go to the myth of empires discord the game is definitely getting some life breathed back into it. Do not listen to all the doomsday and naysayers. They take up the minority of people right now, and they're just upset that things aren't going their way. <laughs> um, but hopefully some of those changes, there are a few things that they are in the right about, like a lot of the, you know, PVP aspects of locking certain aspects of the game. So, you know, you don't get big Chinese Zergs constantly jumping over into the North American region and raiding everybody, you know, with a thousand plus people, you know, things like that. There needs to be some limitations. Um, <clears throat> those things are legit, but the people that are saying that the game is just trash and stupid because of things like that, they are wrong. Um, the game is a lot of fun. There's a lot of things to do outside of PvP. There's a lot of things to do inside of PvP. As long as they keep the whole server transfer thing under lock, it should bring a breathe a lot, a lot of life back into the game again. But again, if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to jump on the Discord and ask. Also, um, I'm hoping to get a hands on a couple of keys. Maybe I'm going to double check with uh, the developer slash admin people um on the discord and see if i could get at least a few keys maybe like maybe one or two or three possibly um so when i do uh the relaunch and the live stream for the actual uh 1.0 release on february 21st um i'll have a couple of keys to give away um i can't make any guarantees right now but i am going to ask to see if that's something i can do um other than that guys thanks for watching as always don't forget to join my discord as well too don't forget to like and subscribe and i will hopefully see you guys out there at myth of empires on the end of february all right guys peace out take care happy hunting